season two there's a lot of new characters and also the stakes are a lot higher we know what we're dealing with and from a story plot line we don't have to explain that to the audience anymore so you can get really in depth with the characters and you know all the nuances between their relationships as well and uh, Nora and F at the beginning of the season are going to start developing a vaccine and that's going to be their mission you know for a few few episodes um, and then also, the, you know, for Nora, the fact that uh, she has nothing to lose anymore. She lost her mother, and uh, she just becomes this, uh, this, you know, really strong fighter. But is she still struggling with the idea of doing the right thing and doing the right thing to survive? No, it's not that struggle anymore, because um, she knows the right thing as, you know, you saw her killing her own mother in season one, so she knows that the right thing is just to, you know, not let those, you know, monsters propagate and continue um, uh, uh, as a race. Uh, but she always, you know, so she doesn't have that struggle anymore. She knows what the right thing to do is. But you, you're always going to see Nora with a more humanist, you know, a more human side to whatever's happening that day. And I think that's what brings to that to the group, you know. She has her own humanity and um, she, you know, she has a lot of compassion. Um, and a lot of the characters don't have that. So um, you'll see her um, helping out maybe, you know, even euthanasia and like, you know, killing people uh, in a more um, human way instead of just chopping heads left and right. And then when that's needed, she'll be, doing, she'll be the first one to do that as well. Yeah. So Nora and F are basically experimenting on this couple who've been infected. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that and how far we might see that go? We are going to see that go really far. Uh, it's a pretty great turn on the story. Uh, Corey and I had a lot of fun working together. Uh, it was kind of like doing a play a little bit because we were in one um, in, in one location in the lab and she's working with this two incredible Canadian actors and, um, and yeah, it's going to go quite far and then you see a little bit like the difference between Nora and Nam, how they how they deal with the situation with those two patients, you know, because it's, uh, it's pretty brutal what, what Nora and Nam are going to do to those two. Are we going to see a lot of conflict then develop between Nora and Nam? You know, not, not, I think that the beautiful thing about their relationship is that they, they work really well together and they complement each other beautifully and uh, we're going to see, so work-wise, no, but uh, um, personally, yeah, we will. Um, F is going to be drinking quite a lot this season, he's going, he's, you know, off the wagon and, uh, and um, yeah, and, you know, being a, a drinking alcoholic again and Nora is going to, you know, step back a little bit from the relationships because she doesn't want to be involved with someone that is sober. And uh, that also leaves Zach being left alone a lot of the time and left alone by a quite irresponsible father. So she will um, become a little bit of a surrogate mother towards Zach and that will bring a lot of conflict with Kel as well. Yeah. Are there any other new characters that are going to become an ally to her? Uh, well, she, you know, we, we live with with, uh, with Fed and Dutch, and uh, of course there's um, some connections with them, and Nora towards the end of the season will develop a great uh, friendship with Fed. They go out on missions together, and, uh, and that was, that's something really lovely that uh, develops during the, during the season, yeah. And also she also, she also has this, you know, love for Satrakia, you know, I always feel like they have this strange father-daughter relationship somehow. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think I, I fit a lot in, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you need.